So in this next module, we're going to talk about the pre-writing step. This is the step where you get organized and get all your information at your fingertips. So the pre-writing step is all about getting organized. So I'm going to tr try to get you out of the habit of trying to write and gather information simultaneously. So I already talked a little bit about this before. Um, but I love to tell the story about when I was a graduate student. So whenever I was working on a manuscript as a graduate student, if you walked into my office, you would see that my office was kind of blanketed with papers. So there'd be like three papers on the printer, two on the filing cabinet, three spread out on the floor behind my chair, uh, a couple papers spread out under my desk, a couple papers spread out over uh, over my desk. Uh, you know, there'd just be sort of papers everywhere. And I'd have a good sense of where each paper was located, right? I could find it and, you know, God forbid anybody come in and, you know, rearrange my papers because I kind of knew where they all were. And my writing process would look something like this. So I get into, okay, I'm going to write my discussion. I'm about two sentences down into the discussion. And up oh, now I need to get a piece of information from that clinical trial by Jones et al. Huh, where is that paper? Yep, that paper is on the top of the filing cabinet. Okay, pull the paper down, rifle through it. Oh, look at that, I already highlighted that fact. Great. So I've got that fact now. I'm going to put the paper back carefully where I got it from. Now I'm going to type that piece of information into my paper. And it would be this really long, drawn-out process. Notice how I wasn't doing any writing in that whole step. I was just kind of looking for information. Now I've dated myself a little bit because I realize that people don't use hard copies anymore. Um, but there is a digital equivalent to this where you're toggling between Google and PubMed and email and whatever else to gather your information. So as I said before, it's just a really, really painful way to write. I used to procrastinate writing when I was a graduate student. I really dreaded having to go into write because it was this long, drawn out process. So I'd go on these long bike rides and things. You can do that when you're a grad student, you have more time. Um, so uh, the idea is, though, that eventually, as I uh, got more serious about writing, I evolved a process that is a much better, more efficient way to write. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that process. But you want to get organized first. So you want to get all of your information, organize it, and have it at your fingertips before you sit down to write the first draft. And what that looks like for me is the following. And you're each going to have to come up with your own system that works well for you. But my system is something like this now. I, and when I get a manuscript, you know, I, uh, I'm kind of collecting manuscripts. As I get manuscripts, as I find them, I'll kind of skim through them, read through them. As I'm reading through them, I'll figure out, you know, exactly what facts and uh, uh, information and, and statements I think are important and that I'm going to be referencing in my manuscript. Or if I, you know, it doesn't even have to be a manuscript, if I'm sometimes, you know, writing pieces. So uh, I will take that piece of information and immediately put it into an ongoing Word document, a single Word document. So I'll just, you know, say, okay, the, the, this is the percentage, this is the statistic they found, I'll put the reference. So I'll gather that piece of information, put it in my little ongoing Word document with the reference. Then I'll take that paper and I'll kind of have a sense of where that paper, you know, fits in. I'll categorize it in some way. So if I'm doing, looking at, um, you know, clinical trials versus observational studies, I might write on the top of it, this is, you know, clinical trials one, and then I'm going to put it in a manila folder, either you know a real manila folder or an electronic one. Uh, that's the manila folder that has all of the clinical trials. So I have an organization way that I can easily get back to and find that paper if I need it. In an ideal situation, I actually never end up needing to go back to that paper except you know a few papers I have to go back to. But for the most part, I've already got the information out that I need. So I gather all of that information as I'm reading papers. I file those papers in a nice organized way. And I get this document going um, where, this is my organizational system. So I get this document going where I've got all of the facts and figures that I'm going to use. And it starts as just this long, long Word document with a whole bunch of facts and, and pieces of information in it. So that's my organizational system. That's how I kind of organize my thoughts. Then what I do to organize all my thoughts for my paper is I start cutting and pasting in that what I call a roadmap. It's not really an outline, but I call it a you know, roadmap. All of those pieces of information, after I've gone through and I've got them all in this long Word document, I'll just go ahead and go through and rearrange them. So all the facts that are pertinent to a particular section of my manuscript or my article, I'm going to kind of cut and paste them so all of those facts are together. So that when I sit down to write my paper, I know that you know, in this section of the paper, I'm going to be talking about this particular um, 
uh, thought, this particular idea, and I'm going to have all the facts that are relevant to that right there with all the citations, so it's right at my fingertips. So that's kind of my organizational system. So I want to ask you the question, do you have an organizational system? Hopefully it's something better than having paper strewn about your office. Uh, if you don't have a good organizational system, then create one that suits you, and you're going to kind of, it's very individual what people like for their organizational system, but, but spend some time thinking about how you can get yourself organized. A lot of people feel like it's a waste of time to spend time organizing, but it's not. It, is, it, it will save you so, so much time down the road if you have a, an efficient system for organizing your thoughts ahead of time. So think about that. If you don't have a good organizational system now, maybe you already have one that works for you, but if you don't, try to come up with one. And again, I've told you a little bit about my system. If you spend more time organizing before you start writing, your writing will be less painful. You'll spend less time in that step that's really hard, which is the composing prose step. So, and what you write will come out to be much, much more organized. So you want to develop some kind of roadmap. And, you know, again, I use the term roadmap as opposed to outline. It's kind of like an outline, but it doesn't have A, B, C, 1, 2, 3. Again, for me, it's just simply a list of facts and figures and information with citations that I move around so that I put all of the pertinent information in, you know, the same place on the Word document. And I think in paragraphs and sections. So I think I've thought out before I sit down to write, well, I know this section of my article or my paper is going to be about X and Y. So I have all the information pertinent to X and Y in that part of the Word document. So again, it's all in one place when I sit down to write. And you also might think in paragraphs, so what's going to go in each paragraph roughly? I usually kind of leave it to sections. I don't quite get as detailed as down to the paragraph level, but if it's helpful, you could even go down to the paragraph level. So I'm going to give you an actually, just show you an example of one of my roadmaps. I took a screenshot and it's going to show you what a roadmap looks like for me. Notice that my Word document is uh, here and we're at page 33. This probably, this Word document is probably 60 pages long. I'm just throwing things into the Word document as they come along. I'm not going to end up using it all in the end of the day, but when I rearrange it and put it all in the right bins, I'll at least know all the information I have. A lot of it won't actually make it in my article, but it'll be the background for my article. So I was recently writing an article about how biostatistics is a hot field right now. That was a particularly enjoyable article for me to write since the other thing I teach at Stanford besides writing is I teach statistics, specifically biostatistics. So uh, I knew I was going to have a section in that article that was going, it was a little historical. It was going back into uh, the 1920s up to the 1970s and talking about some of the history of biostatistics. And so uh, when, I'm, when I'm doing a story like this, this is a feature story, so I actually was able to use quotes. I interviewed people and I had a lot of quotes. So a lot of what was in my roadmap was just quotes that, from people that I've talked to. So I have all these quotes that I knew I wanted to go in that section. And some of them I highlighted because I was sure that they were going to make it in. And indeed, a couple of these quotes actually did make it into the final article. So uh, this is Brad Efron talking, and he says, people blundered around for 2,000 years trying to decide whether A was better than B. That was a great quote. That made it in the article. And, and then he had later said, the general attitude that you ought to be quantitative and comparative in your thinking in medicine is a very powerful idea that isn't natural to doctors, or at least it wasn't from the Greeks on into about uh, 1930. So both of those quotes actually ended up in the article in this section of the article. And uh, then there was, I was going to give some specific examples, some specific people. Uh, and I put all the details about, there was a specific example of um, a radiologist working on transforming Hodgkin's disease into a curable disease. So there were some details around that example that I wanted to have at my fingertips, the names of the people involved, the dates. So I put all of that there. And that all became that section of the, uh, of the story. And so in fact, when I sat down to write that section, it went, I wrote it like that. It was very quick because I already knew it was going in that section. It was just a matter of putting it into prose. So this is a way you can really make your writing more efficient. Now, another thing that I like to talk about in terms of the pre-writing steps, so one is just gathering all your information, organizing your ideas, uh, getting some kind of crude outline or roadmap. Um, another thing you can be doing during the pre-writing step, actually you can be doing throughout the writing process, but in particular in the pre-writing step, is, is doing some brainstorming and some thinking about your piece away from the computer. When you sit at the blank Word document, you sit at the computer, it's a little bit confining, it's a little bit, you know, angst uh, producing, and sometimes you don't get your best ideas when you're kind of forcing yourself to sit at the computer. So sometimes your best ideas can come when you're kind of brainstorming away from the computer. So here's some things that I like to do. 
I am a busy person, so I need to be very efficient with my time. So I do a lot of writing or more like pre-writing uh, when I've got some extra time to kill. So or when I'm trying to multitask. So uh, I'll do a lot of writing or pre-writing in my head while I'm exercising. And that looks like, you know, I'll work through some ideas about the piece. I will, you know, think about how it's going to be structured. I'll think about what the, what the main take home messages are. And you can work a lot of that out while you're exercising. And it's really great because when you're exercising, your brain kind of just wanders and it just gives you an opportunity to, you know, make some new connections, come up with new cool ideas. Sometimes I come up with my most memorable lines or a really good word that I know I'm going to end up using in my piece while I'm, it just kind of comes to me. So uh, I was doing a feature story and I was thinking through this one scientist, um, how he had fallen into this research area and I thought, oh, the word serendipity, that's just the perfect way to describe it. So that word ended up in my piece. And in fact, when my editor was editing that piece, he actually picked up on that word and said, oh, that's a great way to put it. Why don't you kind of frame that whole paragraph around the serendipity? So that word turned out to be very powerful. So you can kind of do some of this while you're exercising. You can, um, if you're driving alone, if you're commuting, turn off, you know, NPR, your radio, whatever you listen to, and you can brainstorm a lot of ideas while you're driving. I do a lot of brainstorming in the car. Of course, don't try to write it down while you're driving. Just do it in your head. When you get home, then write it down. Um, so that's a good way to think through things because, again, your brain kind of just wanders while you're driving. It gives you a chance to kind of make some connections. Um, while you're waiting in line, put down the magazine or the iPod, and that's a good time to, you know, you've got some extra time. Just let your mind kind of think over the piece you're uh, working on or about to work on. And so, for example, uh, this week I had an appointment and I, you know, was waiting for about three minutes for my appointment. And uh, as I was sitting there, my mind was kind of chewing over this feature story I'm working on on validation. And I suddenly, it just came to me what the crux of that story is. So I, you know, rifled around in my purse, found a little piece of scrap of paper and started, you know, madly scribbling notes because I got it, what the, the crux of that story is. And that never would have come to me had I just been sitting there at the computer waiting for it to come to me. So right on the go, brainstorm away from the computer. You can do things, again, like work out take-home messages. You can organize your paper, kind of figure out the structure and the flow of your paper. And again, you can sometimes write Memor whole memorable lines uh, of, of prose. Some of my best lines have come when I was writing on the go like this. And in fact, um, sometimes I've written entire very, very short pieces, you know, five or six sentences long, 100, 150 words. I've written entire ones while I was, you know, swimming laps. I've come up with the whole thing and then, you know, I had to go back home and quickly write it down. So it's, it's a really fun way to write. It's much more enjoyable than sitting at the computer. It's a good way, especially for the pre-writing step. And then finally, the last thing when you're thinking about pre-writing, again, it's all about organization. So I want to give you, we've talked about how to organize within a paragraph. I also want to mention just kind of how you might approach laying out the organization of your entire piece, your entire paper. So one thing to keep in mind, and this seems obvious, but it often isn't obvious when I'm reading papers, is that like ideas should be grouped. So if you've got multiple paragraphs talking about the same thing, they either should be all collapsed into a single paragraph, or at least the paragraphs should be abutting one another, should be close together. So group like ideas, group like paragraphs. So paragraphs, again, that are talking about similar things. It's often the case when I'm editing things that I'll you know, be reading through a discussion section, two paragraphs in, they're talking about a topic, and then I get to paragraph seven and they're talking about the same topic. They've come back to it, and really those two ideas, ideas need to be brought together. So keep like ideas together. A little tip I can give you about discussing controversies, which often uh, is what you're discussing in scientific articles, is be careful about what I call baiting and switching your reader. Don't do that too many times. So often when we're discussing a controversy, you'll have like an argument, a counter argument, and, and a, a rebuttal. And a typical way people will frame that is that there may be multiple arguments and multiple counter arguments and multiple rebuttals. And so people will want to say, you know, here's argument A, here's the counter argument to argument A, here's the rebuttal to that counter argument. And then let me start the whole sequence again for B, and let me start the whole sequence again for C. And actually that ends up being much harder on the reader because you're going back and forth, pro and con, pro and con, too many times. And that becomes very confusing for the reader. So a better way to organize those kinds of discussions is to put all of the pro arguments first, 
then all of the counter arguments, then all the rebuttals. So A, B, and C, then the counter arguments to A, B, and C, and then the rebuttals to all of those. So that ends up being a little easier on your reader. So try to avoid you know, switching on your reader too many times. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.